Hello, my name is Steve Kokel, and I'm a permafrost scientist with the Northwest Territories Geological Survey. This presentation, titled Mapping Permafrost Across the Northwest Territories, summarizes some approaches to mapping permafrost landforms in a way that trains mappers, involves field validation, and enables impacts on water resources to be assessed. The project has also provided unique opportunities to systematically inventory permafrost landforms across the Northwest Territories through an aerial survey campaign in summer of 2020. For our team, this was a bright light in a very difficult period for all of us due to COVID-19. This work was possible due to an alignment of circumstances that was facilitated by the hard work of a number of individuals, collaborators, and funding organizations committed to Northern Science. I'd like to acknowledge our project team, several of which are Northern-based scientists, and without their skills, as well as the long-standing support of the Tetlet and Editat Gwich'in RRCs and the Inuvialuit Joint Secretariat and Inuvialuit Land Administration, this work would not have been possible. We are indebted to the Government of the Northwest Territories, notably Public Health, which developed policies and procedures enabling safe travel within the Northwest Territories, and the support of the Northwest Territories Geological Survey and Aurora Research Institute. We also thank the Polar Continental Shelf Program, who provided the aircraft support to conduct a 13,000 kilometer aerial survey of permafrost landforms in the Northwest Territories. And of course, our funders, including the Cumulative Impact Monitoring Program. Permafrost thaw and the issue of Northern landscape change is one of the hottest topics in Arctic change science. Because of its importance to the carbon climate feedback, impacts on terrain and aquatic ecosystems, and on northern communities and critical infrastructure. Scientific interest in Arctic change has caused continental to circumpolar scale maps of permafrost landscape change to be produced. These maps are possible because of advances in remote sensing and digital mapping methods. However, determining if these maps represent what we are actually seeing on the ground really needs to be improved. And so does the linkages between the maps showing landscape change and the impacts on aquatic environments. This is required to properly inform climate change adaptation, northern decision making, and to better understand what permafrost thaw really means to the landscapes and to the people of the north. These knowledge gaps have prompted this particular project that I'm going to talk about today. The critical gap between linking broad-scale mapping and local needs and community knowledge of landscape change prompted us to develop a bottom-up permafrost mapping project with the goals of developing Northwest Territory-wide map products characterizing the sensitivity of permafrost terrain. By developing these products collaboratively, we were able to foster knowledge sharing and build relationships between scientists, northerners, and decision makers. In this presentation, I'll provide a brief summary of the mapping project, highlight some results, that relate impacts of landslides and slumps to the uh, effects to, on lakes and streams. And I'll discuss an aerial inventory that we were able to conduct in summer 2020 using teams of northern-based members of the research team to inventory permafrost landforms across the Northwest Territories. This project has adopted a mapping framework that implements a seven and a half by seven and a half kilometer grid system that covers the entire Northwest Territories and transboundary watershed areas. Theme experts developed mapping protocols for the main themes of permafrost landsliding, hydrological, paraglacial or permafrost landforms and organic terrain features. Mappers use GIS software and satellite imagery, and they inspect the landscape within a seven and a half by seven and a half kilometer grid cell. And you can see examples in the, uh, in the left hand side of the slide. Using interpretation guidelines developed by our team of permafrost experts, the mapper classifies the grid cell depending on what type of landforms and disturbance indicators they observe. They enter their observations in a geodatabase. The aim is to rapidly determine whether grid cells are affected by particular thermokarst or permafrost thaw processes, and if sensitive landscape features are present. 
The next sequence of slides demonstrates the mapping procedure. This shows a grid cell. On the left, it's seven and a half by seven and a half kilometers. Uh, the area is in the Willow River watershed, which is, which is just to the southwest uh, of Aklavik. The imagery is from 2017, and we call it near-infrared imagery, and that, that is what gives it its red color. Uh, we use this type of imagery sometimes because landslides or thaw slumps show up very well, and those are all these gray landforms. The grid cell is only one of about 40,000 grid cells in the Northwest Territories and Transboundary Watershed Study Area, all of which need to be mapped. The map reviews the landscape and records what they observe in the drop-down menu shown on the right-hand side of this screen. The mapper would indicate the presence of large and small retrogressive thaw slumps, affecting streams and rivers in this area. And they can attribute the size and relative numbers as well as the type of environment that the landslides are impacting. In this case, the slumps and slides affect valleys and streams. Similar guidance is provided to the mappers to identify and describe shallow landslides, circled in yellow, which also impact this environment. And also, for the identification and character, characterization of deep-seated landslides, including rotational and translational failures. And these are becoming more common as the permafrost warms. Sliding at the base of permafrost occurs, so large volumes of materials can move rapidly downstream, or downslope, sorry. Uh, there's an example of this uh, type of landslide here, and this is uh, about eight kilometers from the Yukon border four kilometers south of the Dempster Highway, and it is in fact visible from the highway. So it's a large chunk of uh, the uh, side of this uh, hill slope or mountain that, uh, that slid uh, down slope. The mapping has progressed well and has provided opportunities to train several young scientists and community members in identifying features that indicate permafrost landscape change. The uh, panel on the left shows mapping progress for the mass wasting theme uh, or permafrost landslides where over 40 percent of the mapping has been completed. Despite COVID-19, we have been able to employ a team of mappers to implement the methods described in the previous slides to inventory landscapes affected by permafrost thaw under the themes of landslides, hydrological features such as expanding or draining lakes, and permafrost landforms indicative of sensitive terrain, such as areas with ice wedge polygons or pingos and peatlands. The mapping is able to advance because we have been able to train mappers distributed across the Northwest Territories and Canada. We have employed three Northwest Territory student mappers, two in Yellowknife and one in Inuvik, on this project over the past year and young graduate students interested in Arctic science are also participating in the mapping at Queen's University, Wilfrid Laurier, University of Alberta, and at the University of Victoria. An important part of our mapping project has also been to make connections between landscape change and streams and lakes. We know that large landslides caused by thawing permafrost increases the amount of sediment and different chemicals in the water of lakes and streams. As an example, again, we show results from the Willow River where we mapped all of the landslides affecting each stream segment in the watershed, and then we traced the accumulation of downstream effects, which are shown in this map. As the area of disturbance increases, the thickness of the red line increases. The map can show us what parts of the watershed are most impacted, and it shows the accumulation of downstream effects. The pictures at the top right show a large thaw slump and a large delta lake that is rapidly infilled because of all the sediment being carried into the delta by Willow River. In the bottom right of the slide, we can compare satellite images from the mid-1980s, which are the two uh, images on the left-hand side, with ones from 2019. We can see that most of the big landslides have grown since 1985, and we can see that the Delta Lake only recently infilled. We hope to collect core samples from this lake in April. In some years, a winter road is constructed to access a gravel quarry that supplies the town of Aklavik. So we 
we can access the lake uh, with uh, environmental monitors from a clavic using that route. And we can analyze the sediments captured in the lake to see what types of materials have come from the thawing slopes in the catchment into the Mackenzie Delta. This project also supports field investigations so that we can work with land users to document the changes affecting environments around their communities, while also providing information to validate interpretations being made by the mappers. This is a fly through showing the results of UAV terrain surveys of one of the Willow River tributaries shown in the previous slide. The incised valley is affected by numerous shallow landslides and smaller thaw slumps. We can see that the valley is infilled with sediment and this comes from a mega slump in the upper watershed, which is coming into your, uh, into your vision here. Permafrost thaw has exposed ice rich permafrost uh, and the head walls are up to 50 meters high. This landslide has grown over the past decade and a half, and it has displaced over 2 million cubic meters of material over that time span. The Willow River catchment is affected by numerous disturbances, uh, much like the one shown in this, in this video. One of our project objectives is to collect information to validate the remote sensed mapping of all environments affected by thawing permafrost across the Northwest Territories. Perhaps the most exciting part of the project is to develop information that links maps to ground-based knowledge of thawing permafrost. The development of intermediate scale validation through observationally based aerial surveys is the topic of the remainder of this presentation. Detailed field studies are important to help us understand how landscapes are changing because we know that landscapes are changing in a wide variety of ways. To validate mapping for a large diverse area like the Northwest Territories, we aim to conduct aerial surveys to see a lot of different environments. In the summer 2020, we were able to conduct an extensive aerial survey because by midsummer, travel within the Northwest Territories was possible for Northern residents. The Polar Continental Shelf Project, which funds our helicopter grant, was able to support some northern lead projects, enabling our aerial survey. Three other critical factors were in place. The mapping project I described earlier meant that the team had already created a database or an organizational structure and rules for describing landforms that indicate permafrost thaw. Secondly, our northern, our northern based team members were already developing permafrost survey templates using Survey123 which allows a data recorder to enter information on an iPad-like tablet. This was already being discussed for implementing ground-based field surveys with the Nubial environmental monitors. So this meant that observations, including photographs, their exact locations, could all be tied together in uh, making the collection and organization of aerial survey information possible. Thirdly, there's finally a growing northern-based science capacity to implement or even lead permafrost environmental geoscience projects. Being able to capitalize on the opportunity in 2020 highlights a clear need for northern-based science and community capacity to advance field programs, leverage collaborative relationships, and link science initiatives to northern needs. The team quickly adopted and enhanced and modified the Thermokarst Mapping Geodatabase such that observations and the characteristics of complex landforms could be rapidly recorded by an expert interpreter who described features and a third member of the team who obtained georeferenced photographs. Implementation of the pro protocol was iterative and some adjustments were required, uh, but the process of data collection also served as active training in permafrost uh, geomorphology for all of the team members and presents a great opportunity for training students and community partners. So the next two slides just illustrate uh, an example of how the information was recorded in the aerial surveys. Here a team was viewing a deep seated landslide in a mixed forest ecological setting in uh, a stream environment. The feature is a translational failure. There's a big block or slab that uh, moved down slope and it is bedrock controlled. 
It is recent, uh, it's large, and it uh, meets the criteria of a mega failure. It's connected to the uh, valley below, and uh, it affects fluvial uh, landscape. With respect to hydrological features, uh, this slide illustrates what a, uh, would be recorded in a thaw lake or thermokarst lake environment. It occurs in a mixed forest wetland environment. Uh, the uh, geology is bedrock because it's near the shield around Yellowknife, uh, but there's also uh, lake sediments in the environment. The uh, shoreline is collapsing, the lakes are expanding, but there is also evidence of lake drainage in other parts of the uh, photo frame. And uh, the landforms affect uh, a significant portion of the In summer 2020, the permafrost inventory covered the southern Arctic, tundra, taiga cordillera, taiga plains, and taiga shield areas of the Northwest Territories and assessed over 13,500 kilometers of flight lines, compiling over 3,000 permafrost landform observations, and over 19,000 georeferenced photos were collected and organized into a geospatial database. We anticipate that all of these data, including flight lines, photographs, and feature descriptions, will be available to view on the NWT Spatial Data Warehouse. This slide shows how information from the aerial inventories can be used to validate the mapping that is being conducted using remote sensing and mapper interpretation. The flight lines are the dotted lines uh, on the map on the left, and this is the Mackenzie Delta and Richardson Mountain region. Uh, the grid cells that are white are indicate that there are no landslides, and these were mapped mostly in the Mackenzie Delta, where we know landslides don't happen. The grid cells and the colors uh, were classified according to the presence of one, two, or three types of major landslides. And we can see the western edge of the delta, where there's hill country, and the permafrost is ice rich. Uh, we can see this area is affected by lots of landslides. All of the diamonds show observations of retrogressive thaw slumps, shallow and deep slides that were observed in the aerial surveys. A simple summary shows that 100% of the retrogressive thaw slumps observed in the aerial surveys are in grid cells that were classified accordingly. 83% of the deep slides and 70% of the shallow slides. So what this tells us is the, the mappers are doing a pretty good job at identifying landslides correctly. And the map itself shows us areas where there are lots of landslides affecting the terrain and areas where there are few. The project team aims to work with community members to discuss mapping results and where there is interest to train mappers to help with the project. We've had a lot of interest in developing protocols for assessing permafrost landforms that the Guardians program or Inuvial environmental monitors can implement when doing field work. This year we hope to put these pro field protocols uh, on field tablets for use in monitoring and if COVID regulations permit and organizations are comfortable, we hope to have community members join us on aerial surveys this summer. In summary, remote sensing combined with knowledge of northern landscapes has made possible an inventory of landscapes affected by permafrost thaw extending across the entire Northwest Territories. The project activities will support mapper training and field work to validate the results. Land users must be engaged in inventorying permafrost landscape change. Northwest Territories wide maps of sensitive permafrost terrain provide baseline information around all Northwest Territories communities and for important environments. And maps about landscape change can help with sharing knowledge about landforms, landscape change, and thawing permafrost. Thank you.